Good morning. Good morning. Today we'd like to thank Father Tom Bramley for being our bishop today. And, and we welcome him back. And we welcome him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Announcements today, coffee hour downstairs today, and we do have a sign-up sheet uh, for anybody that is willing to bring and participate in that. Uh, you can sign up on the sheet in the back. Uh, don't forget to pick up your September calendars back there. We have a free community meal on the 16th. Uh, another church is actually providing the, the actual food, but they always like St. John's desserts. <laughs> we'll be talking it over here and we'll decide what we need and 
if we need any extra, we'll let everybody know. Yeah. Right. Don't forget we have the vestry meeting on September 18th. And of course, always there's a way to give is through the Fiscal Relief and Development Salvation Army and SBCA donations to basket Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries?
Our service this morning is Holy Eucharist Rite 2, found beginning on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Then he said, come no closer. 
Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face. He was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptian, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But, Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Rejoice in hope. 
Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Continue to the, contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will keep burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Our sequence in this morning is I have decided to follow Jesus. Lift every voice and sing number 136. Stay at this work, people. <laughs> Or what will they give in return for their life? 
For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Moses is out working one day, strolling around, seeing how the world was going on. And he saw a slave master beating a Jewish slave, violently trying to kill him. Moses took the rod and killed the slave master. Killed the slave master. So what did Moses do? Stand up for what is right and tell people what happened? He ran away. He ran away and hid. And he became the husband of Jethro's daughter. You don't need to know that, but I just threw that in. <laughs> he was a sheep herder. He was a sheep herder, and we get the story today of the burning bush. The burning bush. God says, Moses, I want you to go back to Egypt, where you ran away from, where you had killed somebody. I want you to go back and tell the Pharaoh, your good buddy, let my people go. You can see Moses saying, mm -mm, we're not working here today. <laughs> but he did. Do you have other little dirty secret about Moses? He couldn't talk. He stuttered and he stammered. He had an incredible speech in heaven. Remember Aaron goes pretty much everywhere that Moses goes? There's a reason for that. Aaron had to speak words for Moses. There's a little bit of good in the worst of us. There's a little bit of bad in the best of us. So let's fast forward a couple of thousand years. That wasn't very interesting, was it? We're now up to Paul. Remember Paul? The guy who was knocked off his animal, blinded. Do you know what he did before that? He was a hired gun. He was hired by the high priest of the temple in Jerusalem to go find these annoying Christians and to wipe them out, get rid of them. Do you remember the stoning of Stephen, the first martyr? He was in the city and was proclaiming the word of God through Christ and Paul says, kill him, kill him. Well, now you know the rules. You can't kill anybody in the village of Wellsville. You can take them outside and do something, but in the village of Wellsville, you cannot kill anyone. Well, that's the rule back then, too. You can't kill anybody in the city. So they take Stephen out of the city gates in a field outside and they stone him to death. But before they stoned him to death, remember what they did? They took Stephen, Stephen's garments and they laid them at the feet of Paul. That's a symbol that says, we are stoning this man to death on your word that this is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to kill someone because you told us it was okay. The power of God to change people. So what happens to Paul? You know why he was sent all over the world to root out these nasty little Christians? He was a Roman citizen. He could go anywhere in the world he wanted. He could anoint people to say, that's a Christian, I want them dead. What a change it happens when God enters your life and really starts to form a relationship with you. And it really starts to make a difference. So let's fast forward a couple of years, not that far. Peter. Uh, remember poor Peter? Peter was one of the orneriest, nastiest people of the New Testament. He was so stubborn, he wouldn't listen to anybody. Remember last week, if you were here, someone preached on the confession at Caesarea Philippi. You are the Son of God, the Savior of the world. So what does he say this week? 
Don't let anything happen to you, buddy. We need you here. Do you ever feel insecure and overwhelmed by what's happening in your life? Peter was frightened to death that Jesus would be taken from them and this would all be over. Your dream would end. <coughs> so Peter, in his stubborn nature, remember when they came to arrest Jesus? What was Peter's welcoming thing? He took out his sword and cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest. Not the kind of guy you want your daughter to bring home for dinner. <laughs> really? There's a little bit of good in the worst of us and a little bit of bad in the best of us. So what does that have to do with you and me? Congratulations on 60 years of knowing each other. See you back in the food. something good that dwells within us. We all have some downfalls. But you know what I love about God? God loves us the way we are. God loves us for trying. God loves us for making an effort. God loves us for worshiping together. God loves us for reaching out to people who have a moment where they need our help. God loves us for all the little things we do. And you know all those little bad things in the best of us? That's why that man died on the cross for us. That we can be freed from that weight. That we can be freed from that guilt. Where we can have a new beginning every single day. When the sun rises, we are forgiven of all our past and all that has happened. And it gives us the hope that today can be better than yesterday and tomorrow can be better than today. So the next time you find somebody that you're not particularly fond of, remember, there's a little bit of good in the worst of us.
my sisters and brothers, be kindly affection to one another with love. And let us come before God saying, we glory in your holy name and responding and offer to you our prayer, O Lord. Lord Jesus, you bid your disciples take up their cross and follow you with the help of Michael, our presiding bishop, Stephen, our provisional bishop, and our officiant. May your holy church desire above all the things of God that we might overcome evil with good. We glory in your holy name and offer to you our prayer, O Lord. Lord God of our forebears, you know the sorrows of the afflicted. Deliver those who are being oppressed and grant your peace to all the world. We glory in your holy name and offer to you our prayer, O Lord. Good Lord, you make known your wondrous works. Reveal yourself in the works of your hand, as you did to Moses, our forebear, on the holy mountain. We glory in your holy name, and offer to you our prayer, O Lord. O Lord, grant that the people of our land be given to hospitality, that we may abhor that which is evil, and cleave to that which is good, and in so doing, may we live peaceably with one another. We glory in your holy name, and offer to you our prayer, O Lord. Strong Lord, make us weep with those who weep, remembering Sherry, Holly, Lisa, Mary Lou, Kenny, Alfred, Liz, Betsy, Chuck, Megan, Tad, Danielle, Stephen, Father John Andrews, Helen Evans, and anyone else you wish to name at this time. Mary and <laughs> We glory in your holy name. And offer to you our prayer, O Lord. We pray for all veterans, for all first responders, for Danielle Flower, Aaron Helms, and anyone else you wish to name at this time. We glory in your holy name and we offer to you our prayer, prayer, O Lord. Almighty God, you reward each one according to their works. Give to the dead rest from their labors and life everlasting. Remembering this morning anyone you wish to name. We glory in your holy name and offer to you our prayer, O Lord. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and call to turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Returning to page 360, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor.
682. Number 654. 654. You, you can sit if you want to for this. Is that, am I creating a problem? No. You've been standing for quite a while. <laughs>
In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <laughs> After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. <laughs> Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, Presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit in the fullness of time. But all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with John and all of your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. how I fuss with that. My mother was ahead of the altar guild for 60 years. <laughs> One time I couldn't do it right, she walked up and tore off the altar. <laughs> Our service continues on page 365. Page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. 
Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Comfort the afflicted. Honor and love all God's creation. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and your being with you and with all those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our sending forth this morning is Glory, Glory, Hallelujah, 130. In lift every voice and sing. Let's do the first three verses. There's a couple verses to hit down the bottom. So I'll forget that.